Yes, yes team, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about time under tension. Is time under tension important for building muscle? I'm gonna to explain to you why it's actually a bit overrated and the confusion surrounding time under tension for muscle growth. If you are new to the channel, my name is Dan and I simplify losing fat and building muscle. Hit that subscribe button and drop the video a like. We are gonna get into today's tips also stick around till later in the video because I'm gonna be giving you a free training program, a fat loss guide, nutrition guide to help you speed up your results in the gym. What is time under tension? Time under tension typically refers to the length of time that you are taking to perform your reps. This is normally in seconds and you can split this into a couple of phases. For simplicity, I'm gonna split this into the concentric and the eccentric. The concentric is the shortening phase. So if you think of a bicep curl on the way up, the muscle is contracting and shortening on this phase. So concentric and then eccentric, the lowering phase where the muscle is then lengthening. So splitting it into these two phases, if you took a few seconds to perform each phase, then the total amount of time that it takes you to perform each rep is known as time under tension. Now, because of people saying that time under tension is important for muscle growth, this then led to some confusion around people thinking that the longer that you spend taking time to perform your overall rep, the more muscle you are going to build. Now, the reason why this is actually potentially holding you back building muscle is because in order to recruit muscle fibers, we need a powerful concentric phase. So if you think about driving up on a chest press, if you deliberately slow down this portion of the rep, you are gonna limit the weight that you can actually lift. So it's actually counterintuitive to deliberately slow down your rep speed to this extent. So you need a powerful drive up to get the weight up and then focus on controlling the way down. So a good general rule of thumb that I like to give my clients is one to two seconds on the way up and then a slightly longer eccentric lowering phase. So this could in practice be something like driving up one second up and then two or three seconds on the way down. And this is for a couple of reasons. This ensures that you are performing the exercises safely under control with proper form but we're also recruiting the muscle fibers that we're trying to target. So powerful concentric and then a controlled eccentric phase to make sure that we're performing the exercises safely under control. So circling back to the bigger picture as always, what do we need to build muscle? We need training intensity, so training close enough to failure, not leaving more than say two to three reps in reserve. If you are leaving more than three reps in the tank on a working set, you're not really pushing yourself sufficiently and you need to go slightly closer to failure. The sweet spot is probably gonna be one to two reps in reserve, but this is gonna depend on how many sets you are doing. So I've got videos explaining this in more detail. However, for simplicity for this video, make sure that you're not leaving more than three reps in the tank on a working set. Push yourself on each set to establish a minimum training intensity to build muscle. Then over time, progressive overload, increasing the demands on your body over time. In practice, that this means adding more reps per set on, a, on the same weight. And then when you are getting comfortable on that weight, maybe performing sets of 10 or 12 reps, then increase the weight, drop the reps down and cycle back up through your rep range. So this is gonna ensure that you are building muscle over time. Now, a better model for time under tension which is definitely not as catchy as TUT as TUT, uh, is time under significant tension. So the, re the reps that actually count for muscle growth are those ones where you are getting to within a couple of reps of failure and the weight is starting to get more challenging. So what we need is the presence of fatigue to build naturally during your set. Say you do a set of 10, 10 is failure. When you're getting to say, reps six and seven, it's actually getting difficult. The first few reps, you're just going through the motions, it's easier. Then as fatigue starts to set in and it becomes harder to perform the reps, you are not gonna have to think about time under tension. You are naturally gonna be trying to move the weight like you did at the start of the set, but the weight's not gonna move as quickly because it's just getting harder and the presence of fatigue is there. So instead of overthinking how many seconds you have to spend in each phase, just focus on a powerful concentric and then controlling the lowering phase, 
Then as you get closer to failure, your rep speed is naturally going to slow. When your rep speed naturally slows, this is when we're gonna recruit the high threshold motor units, meaning we are gonna be recruiting the maximum amount of muscle fibers towards the end of a working set. And this is the sweet spot for muscle growth. Summarize here, time under tension is not as significant for muscle growth as people make out. And a better approach is to ensure that you are pushing yourself close enough to failure with a weight that is challenging. And then when you get towards the end of a working set, your rep speed is naturally going to slow down because it's harder to move the weight. So assuming that you are performing your sets under control, performing each rep with good form, you are going to have this natural slowing of your rep speed and this is the time under significant tension that is then going to actually build muscle on these challenging reps towards the end of each set. Then providing that you are upping the weight over time through progressive overload, you are going to get results and build muscle. But this is not something to overthink. Make sure that you're just performing the exercises safely and you are training close enough to failure and then the time under tension part is gonna take care of itself, providing that you are lifting under control. As promised earlier in the video, free training programs available for you, and once you get some structure to your training and to your diet, things get a lot easier. So in the video description, there's gonna be links to getting a free nutrition guide download and a free training program, and you can visit my website if you would like to see my client results and take your results to the next level. If you are ready to do so, please do get in contact for some online coaching services. I would love to help you get incredible results with me. And you can see all of the results on my website, which is also linked in the video description. Thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, reminder to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Drop the video a like because it really does help the channel grow. And I will see you on the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you later on.